think that would have been appropriate. It is Will. Yeah, it would have looked like an ice cream store, but uh, yeah. yeah, it is Will. You like ice cream, Will? <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner Dean. We are on episode 79 tonight. Uh, we are going to be doing framing pastel and charcoal artwork after our pastel episode last week. We've got Sam Bowie in the house that's going to be teaching us how to do this framing. Now we talked about a lot of different things with pastels last week and we talked about some techniques and uh, all sorts of things from there. Since then I've, I've actually been working on some different pastels. I was working on something that we're going to use to frame for tonight with the pastels that you guys saw last week, the brand that we used, the Mungio sets, and, uh, and learned a few things that I wanted to go ahead and tell you about just while I'm thinking about it. Um, have been collecting some pastel books since then. The internet's a great thing. You can get like oh, books yeah. like that. <laughs> um, we talked about the My Teens paper. One of the books that I read was talking about paper and light fastness. Not all pastel papers are pigment based most of them are dye based which means what Sam if it's in somewhere that gets light uh, it'll fade it will fade uh, when we talked about doing color charts <laughs> so far you passed oh, wow. <laughs> that was just the first question though no, no. Oh, um, when we talked about doing color charts with the pastels uh, we talked about looking at some different papers that you might want to use uh, one of the books that I read was very vehement on do your color charts on the colors you're going to use then also do a sample chart especially if you just invest in like a, a nice set of pastels do them all on the same page but do them in big long rows cover half up with paper leave the other half with the color and the name uh, to the side and then set them in not a direct sunlight window but just a window that does get light during the day for anywhere from four to six months oh wow because number one you're gonna find out what does your paper do that you're working on because it's even though point. okay even though this might this this is on my teens so mm -hmm. you know will may end up having his paper fade from behind him over time if this one's not light fast that's not necessarily the worst thing because they weren't fading like ridiculously like this is a light brown and then it goes suddenly to white. Right, right. But what does happen is where some of these colors are very vibrant and really pop on this mm -hmm. shade, when that fades, if it does, suddenly those colors don't look the same. They look like they were done on a much lighter paper. Mm -hmm. Things that looked really bold and really strong like this might not be as bold and strong. Things that were very muted and soft may suddenly jump out just because of what the, that color shift is that the paper undergoes. Okay. So things to think about when you're doing it. Also, I'm going to say that I did not swatch the, the colors like I tell people to do because it, well, they weren't my pastels, they were works pastels. I know Katie's shaking her finger at me. <laughs> well, okay, so it was either I could get the artwork done in time or I could swatch, um, it was like, 400 different pastels between pastel pencils and all that I was using. So um, it was frustrating and I scribbled a lot on a corner and then finally just took an extra sheet of the paper and was scribbling on that to see what it looked like because I'd go to put something on and I'd be like, ah, I can't see that. So I was having to test before I applied it because you know, it's not until you work on that color, I've right. been using darker colors than that. So definitely do that, save yourself some time and hassle. Uh, and all that. So, and in the Jerry's Live group, um, if you've not joined our Jerry's Live group, we have a thriving community of what, like 1,600 people, I think, uh, now on um, a Facebook group that's Jerry's Live. Uh, all you have to do is search for it in the groups, that'll pop up. You have to answer the question that it gives you and you can join. But we've got all sorts of really awesome members that share lots of things. Nobody's, there's no trolls lurking. Everybody's very positive and upbeat and very helpful. I'm gonna take a picture of all those pastel books that I've been collecting and, um, and I'll put that in the group so you can see the books that I'm learning from. There's one that's an absolute must that I'm just like drooling over and I've already learned so much technical knowledge from. So I'll do that uh, by the end of the work day tomorrow if people are interested in that. So uh, those are just some things I learned in the last wow. week Lots. in working with pastels. So 
now we're going to learn what do we do when we got the artwork. Poor Will has been sitting around <laughs> here uh, for, I don't know what, since. Three months. Yeah, Three since months. It, wow. it was done for our Fourth of July episode. So, he for looks figure four. Now too. <laughs> he does. He, he's, now he's got a beard. Mm -hmm. He's gone from the, the porn stash to. <laughs> the he, he does. He does look like a lumberjack because he always wears flannel shirts. They so, can, they can see this, so this right? is like a moment in time. Yeah, Katie, can they see? Can they see that? Yeah, can you do yeah. the overhead? It's a moment in time there that Will go. kind of has that Freddie Mercury look. There we go. So, like uh, so we're framing it for him for posterity purposes. Stash. That's well, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so Sam, we've got three different works. We've mm -hmm. got this in pastel. Yep. We've got the charcoal of Katie that mm -hmm. we did, and then we've got the pastel that I did um, over the last couple days. We're going to learn how to frame all of them. So, absolutely. Let's start with Will. All right, we're going to do Will first, and um, and just a uh, about on the paper you were talking about. That was just to see if it fades and that sort of thing, correct? To put it in the light. Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to want to, you don't want to hang pastels, uh, you know, or any artwork for that matter in, in direct sunlight, in direct, number one. No, no, never. But even in, even in a room that's like a sunroom that's very bright, it's really right, not right. a wise idea either. Well, and you can protect them later with uh, UV protective glass. It'll, it'll curb most fading. Uh, you have to couple that with an acid-free backing because the acid, if you put it on cardboard or something, something called foxing will happen. The acids from the cardboard can bleed through and cause little spots on the paper. And I'm sure you guys have seen old newspapers mm -hmm. and things like that that have spots. That's called foxing. Um, and another way to check it out, or a quick way to do it, instead of putting it somewhere behind a uh, uh, light, just put it outside under the sun. You know, I used to recommend check how much stuff would fade, put it on your dashboard in the old cars, the sunlight would be magnified, but now a lot of the windshields and cars are UV protected, so mm -hmm. it doesn't quite work that way anymore. All right, we're going to try to do Will here, hopefully. Um, and now, is this fixed? Yes, it does have fixed okay. it, but I Fix still don't in. recommend touching because it still right, kind can of. lift. It's just mm -hmm. that top layer is protected for the most part. Do they know what fixative is? or you want to Yes, know? we've talked about okay, fixative good, good. and how you definitely want to do that with pastels. Absolutely. And there wasn't, we talked about color shift last week. With that Mungio set, with the I used the Artist Soft Pastels and the Extra Soft uh, Artist Pastels. And then I also used uh, Conte Pastel Pencils and some Faber Castel Pastel Pencils okay, yeah, that yeah. I had. Um, there was no color shift at all with the Sennelier Pastel Fixative, the Latour wow. Fixative. So, so we're good for that. I was very pleased. Nothing faded, disappeared. Good, 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 yeah. And Amy knows a lot about all this uh, medium and uh, the tools to use and all that. I'm yeah. just basically the four corner guy. But uh, I can show you guys yeah. how to do this. Okay, we have uh, Will right now is on a 22 by 28 piece of foam board. Uh, that's acid free backing. So he's already down there like that and I already have a pre-cut mat. This guy right here. Um, and you might wonder why the shape is odd. That's just uh, because it was an odd size image going in. Uh, we could do this. We could have done this differently. I could have had the window and the side, like the top side and the other side, even, and then weight the bottom. But that would have been a whole lot of weight. So mm -hmm. I think it would have looked really awkward. Uh, and a lot of people do weight the bottom of their artwork. The reason being is that if you hang it and someone short comes walking up and the bottom of the mat is the same size as the top and the sides, it'll look narrow, but if it's weighted, it'll, it'll even out when they're looking up at it. Uh, so we're gonna line this up. What I do, we're gonna use um, these photo corners here to anchor it down to the, uh, to the backing board, but what I like to do with the mat is line it up to make sure the image that's showing is correct. Wait, since we've got pastel showing, can we slide that up just a touch so we get rid of that? Get rid Perfect. of that right there. We might have to trim a little bit That's here fine. at the bottom, Amy, but uh, That's fine. we'll get it all level. Let me get it centered. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. All right, so we got it. We got it pretty much where it needs to be, and now I'm gonna lift the mat up, and we're gonna apply the corners. We'll have to do it on two sides, and then trim this, and do it on the third side. So I'm gonna gingerly flip this around. So it's probably going to be upside down for you guys, but because we had that overlap right there, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to reach across it to try to do this. And he's 
little guys are photo corners. They just peel up like that. And then they can go just over the corner like this. And that'll anchor that down. And you want to get it right at the edge too, because um, even though they're pretty tight against the foam board, the piece could shift and kind of get cockeyed if you don't have it right. So we'll get these two mounted, and that way I can turn it the other way without worrying about it. And then we'll trim the uh, little bottom of it off. So now I can turn this without having to be so careful. And what I'll do is I'll lay the mat back down. And the good thing about these photo corners is that it's not going to be touching any, uh, the artwork is not, doesn't have any adhesive on it. So even though we have acid-free framers tape, which is this white tape right here, um, it's, uh, it's best if you can not to have anything ever adhere to your artwork, and that way you can remove it. And I got a little schmutz of some pastel on there, but that's going to happen. Do we have an eraser? Uh, I can get one. Yeah, magic eraser or something like that'll work. All right, so now I see how much room I got here to trim. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife. And try not to cut the tablecloth. Yeah, that scored the mat a little bit, but that's okay. The frame has a rabbit that will cover up any imperfections. And I recommend being very careful anytime you use one of these guys. Okay, so I got that trimmed off and now what I'm going to do, because I had to get the waist, it was curving over and would have caused problems, I'm going to raise the mat up just enough and use it as a guide again to remove the rest of that so that I can get the other two photo corners on. Signature underneath is still. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, still, I'll hold it. Amy had just signed the uh, signed the piece, and that's still it's not fixed signature. These magic erasers should work. Is it working? Just depends on if the pigment panada, shading pigment or not. I think it's gonna work. Some of these things don't want to peel off, right? Do we need Katie with the nails to <laughs> start it for you? <laughs> I, I, I did three. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I right. got that anchored down. That's good to go. I got all of the edges out of the way. There's another spot too. Amy's cleaning that up right now, but we got Will all secured with the four photo corners. And uh, even though he looks kind of tilted on the backing board, the mat will even Here's them up. The top. And this should be flush with your backing board, as is like that. All right, next we just put our glass on, and um, like I said, we recommend UV glass. These are our proprietary frames. They come with a polystyrene, which is okay um, for protecting it from uh, people poking at it and that sort of thing and dust getting on the face of it. But like I said earlier, any art that you really care about, um, you should use a UV glass. But for this example, we're gonna use the uh, polystyrene that comes with them. We don't uh, bring frames in from our vendor with real glass this size because more than likely the glass will be broken. Yes, and you definitely don't want stuff like that shipped. No, and they got to ship it a long way. Well, even from if these are frames that people can order on the website, just yeah. that would be. Oh yeah, it, shipping from the warehouse. It would come yeah. jingling, jangling, jingling with the. Uh, it would probably be jingling glass. by the time it got to yeah. the warehouse. All right, we'll get this 
And this is a uh, this is polystyrene. It's a, just a real lightweight acrylic. It's got a protective uh, coating on it, a plastic. As you can see, I'm peeling it off. On both sides. Not on both one. sides. Yes. 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 Some people say that. Uh, well, I peeled it off and it still looks dirty. It's like, well, try doing the other side and you'll be all right. Okay, so we got the glazing on there. That's all set. Now with this poly, with the polystyrene glazing, never try and clean it. <laughs> if you do clean it, the best thing to do is just rinse it off with water and use a microfiber cloth very softly. Paper towels or anything else with abrasives in them will scratch it all over. Now we're using the uh, walnut for yes. this, right? Okay. okay. So this is a walnut frame, and we're gonna frame it up in that guy. So. Yeah, it's the Sydney walnut frame, and it's the renewal core. Renewal core, yes. Mm -hmm. That is mean. That means that these frames are recycled out of materials left over, and they're. Uh, That's awesome. It's like green mm -hmm. frames, going green with the frame. Green frames, but in walnut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Amanda's got all the SKUs for all these things, right? They're all uh, linked to the document, and right. they've linked the document in. All right. I'm going to take the. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I staples peel. out from they the come with um, protective uh, cardboard corners on them. So when you do that, you have to peel them off. And then uh, I forgot to get the staples out, and they're they're still on we'll there. This one that comes you around. Okay. Use white gloves like you would with watercolor in this situation. Uh, if you do, and I might be wrong, but if you use white gloves with pastels, those gloves will be used once because <laughs> they will get um, junk all yeah, over. Yeah, but it's not the worst thing just to because. If you're touching any of the paper, just the oils in your hand can yeah, it get can stain. They can stain it. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's not the worst thing to always wear when you're framing. Just even the little soft cotton gloves. Yeah. Like gloves. Yep. All right. So we got the piece down in there. We got our point driver. This is how we mount it. Um, there's several what different ways to mount it, and I think we're going to be using offset clips on this piece back here. So you'll see that as well. And we'll just pop these little guys in. And there's all kinds of different points. These are the ones that I, I, I call the little sea urchins because they're shaped kind of like a sea urchin. <laughs> that's, that's not the technical term. <laughs> Somebody's going to be like... <laughs> Looks like a little they sea urchin. <laughs> <laughs> they look like little sea urchins. So. <laughs> but they call it sea urchins. I can't find it on the website. <laughs> no, don't Google. If you Google sea urchins, you won't find anything like this. Yeah, that's yeah, not quite with the images you know that you're going Hmm? The sea urchins? No, it's it's. <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> flexible multi points. Yeah. And by flexible means that you can put them in and bend them out and put and take art out and put it back in. Which actually, this frame came with the straight flexible points, but when you first start to do something, they're usually kind of bent in a little too much to get your art down in there. And the last thing you want to do is do anything with real glass and force it down in there. Um, so I prefer to take them out and, and redo it once I get them all in there. All right, so that guy is ready to go. Uh, looks good. Yeah, it does. Can you hold it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. That walnut looks good with the yeah, uh, dark behind him. That ended up perfect. Yeah, so that was simple enough. Now, I'll tell you, if this uh, piece wasn't fixed, and we're going to show you how to rectify that later, but if the pastel wasn't fixed, the dust can get on top of the mat. It can trickle down and get on the mat, and once that happens, you have to redo the mat. Well, even if it, it wouldn't be the worst idea to the way that you're going to frame this later, mm -hmm. when you're selling artwork, you never know where the artwork's going to go. Right, right. Whoever buys it may be some executive that moves you know, every two years right, yeah. somewhere. So because even even the movers are aware of how to, you know, move mm -hmm. art and, and package art, that doesn't mean that the jostling just even in a truck or just lifting or even moving from one wall to the next, even with fixative, mm -hmm. if you've got heavy layers of pastel, might not jostle it. So right. just it's, especially if you're going to be selling work, it's better to err on the side of caution, I think. Absolutely. And, and do this. Um, this is going to stay in Will's probably on Will's wall and it's okay. very light layer so I, it's not as as big of a concern. Yeah, yeah, and I've heard that so. sometimes, um, and this doesn't look like the case, but aren't there fixatives out there that'll dull the image? It's What that is is it's not the, it's it's the quality of the pigment mm -hmm. and with cheaper um, 
binders right. in it that are the problem because what happens is the pigment dulls oh, okay. and flattens okay. out because the pigment's load is very light. Right, right, right. This was done with uh, Sennelier and, and some very expensive pastels, pastels and that are super high pigment concentration, so that's not... And a decent fix. Yes. Too. Is it a UV fixative? Um, it, with pastel, you're not worried about it being a UV fixative oh, okay, because okay. That's, that's on paintings. That oh, okay, okay. Yeah, see, like, I don't know anything about the art yeah. stuff, but uh, I do the corners. So that's Will. <laughs> He's all finished. Um, except for the hanger and all that. And I believe I've done that in several episodes. You guys know how to yeah. do V-rings and wire and all that. Um, so Will's done. We can remove all right. him. Let's Thank move you. this over here and I will get you. And would you paper back that too? Oh yeah, you always paper back. Always, always. And the reason for that is that even though it's kind of unlikely, but dust from behind can migrate in and then get on the face. And as a framer, especially with something like Katie's portrait here that is uh, black and white, you get it all framed up and a little bit of dust gets in there and I see spots and you have to take it all apart and redo it, so. Even even bugs? Bugs, uh, I yeah. Mean, spiders could go in there and lay eggs. Silver, or, silver really fish. Just, just, really just think about that on yours, Katie. Katie doesn't <laughs> like spiders. <laughs> well, we'll just go with silver fish, but I've seen those in there as well. And, um, but yeah, if you paper the back, you'll, have, you'll less likely have insects crawl in there or dust get in there. <laughs> And that sort of thing, um, and it looks nicer even though it's against the wall. I've heard, um, I've heard insects really like this Reeves paper. They love paper, Katie. <laughs> yeah, especially with Katie on there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, we're going to do this without a mat. So we're going to need spacers, um, mm -hmm. and we have those right behind. Yes. Uh, Amy, right. there. Yeah. While you're grabbing those, I just want to let you know. Jen Felder has you guys on her big screen. Whoa! So your faces are the size of the dinner plates right now. That's probably not a good thing. But, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not sure what world that's cool in. <laughs> and what dinner plates are we talking about? We're talking about those big serving platters? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Salad plates. That's a serving platter, that's not a dinner plate. Good uh, point. Anybody that has a smart TV or like a Chromecast or any of those mm -hmm. things, there's YouTube and Facebook apps where if they want to watch this on like their television, they can. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I can watch this on my 42 inch flat? Uh, yes. Sure and we're on, we're on YouTube as well as, wow, as Facebook. Wow. So. I don't know if I want to see me in HD TV and 42. Will that be enough? Uh, yeah, it should be. Well, let's see. It's not like we got, uh, don't have plenty more in this container. Yeah, it looks like I got enough to do okay. both. Okay. All right. And, uh, oh, cutters, snips, anything? Uh, what do you need, scissors? Uh, I don't know if scissors will cut that. Do you have wire cutters or clips? Yes. Well, then, what do you have on that finger? Okay. Yeah. These are spacers, guys. These things, the way these things work is that what I'll do is I'll put them into the frame and they set up like this. And then the artwork will be between that and the glazing, so the glass won't touch it. We're going to use polystyrene, and it sags a little bit, but um, it'll be all right. Yeah, and the brand on this is the Econo Space, is what's on the website. The, the, stores, the stores have, what, clear ones? Is that the stores, the stores get theirs from a framing vendor that uh, is not a, it's a commercial vendor. Right, um, but it's clear. So if somebody was by the store and wanted to get spacers, oh, they, yeah, yeah, they can, they can either where buy. Where the ones are black on. They can buy them Thank at the you. frame shop, and there's black and there's clear. The ones at the stores are solid acrylic. These are hollows. Okay. Um, so there's your difference. All right. So we got the piece down here, and I did this a little backwards, but that's all right. Bring this across and lay it like that. What I'll do, what I do with these guys is make sure that I got the same length and I kind of pinwheel them into the frame and you guys will see how that works. Don't want to do it. I don't know where I Impale poor Amanda. No, over there. These, these don't do that because they're hollow. It's a solid one. Maybe scissors would work better. I can tell you from experience, it's going to take a lot of this. How that because you have to make that face too. Yep, gotta make that face. <laughs> it was a very that's angry face, wasn't hmm? it? His face wasn't pretty enough. Well, that's I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I was gonna say I <laughs> that may be a that, technical. I think that's fine with me. Waiting to happen. That is just it. fine with me. All right, so I, and I don't peel the plastic off until I get them done. I'm gonna trim off this little wedge so you're not. Okay. There you yeah. go. And they do fly. Okay, I can have fun yep. with the next one. <laughs> it's 
like I've seen that happen before. <laughs> it about got gotcha. you. I know. The solid ones, when I was at the store, I used to cut them and they would shoot the little tip about 30 feet. <laughs> We'd have spacer wars in the frame shop. I think we will with this have to uh, trim that up. Mm -hmm. I usually pinwheel them. We're kind of somewhat pressed for time, so we'll just kind of do it real quick. But it's black, and the rabbit lip, that little edge right there, is black as well. So sometimes you don't get them exact. I try to do my best. You can tell Sam doesn't have children. Ooh, look at that. Just laying the scissors down, no. open, and I'm like, <gasps> somebody's gonna lose an eye. I saw some uh, telephone commercial, and the guy's running through a park with giant scissors cutting ribbons, and I'm like, the dude's running with scissors. I saw a picture on my phone the other day of the little sewing needle scissors, and I tried to grab them by the point because <laughs> my kid was two feet away. <laughs> nice. Oops. See. All right, you and, and I, I, we think alike. These have adhesives. I just peeled off the uh, little white coating on it, and it just lays flat against the frame. And that goes there, and that sticks to the side of the frame. And I'll dovetail that one, or pinwheeled. So that one's <laughs> pinwheeled. This one's fully pinwheeled, so that's good. Thought we're, first we're going dovetailed. with the kids' toy analogies, then we're going with animals, birds. Yeah. Give me the next one. Silverfish and spiders. <laughs> I've seen it. I've He's seen it all. Kill us. <laughs> I've seen it all in framing. All right, this one got on there a little too quick. That adhesive works though, guys, so uh, yeah. we'll be fine. Uh, that is some sticky-ish right there, okay. All right, so that one, and then this is the one, one of these is the... That's the extra, I think. Is that for the bottom? Yeah, that's for that. And then I gotta peel the other one out from the top of the frame, because I really got in there pretty good. What am I getting all the things that are difficult last? It happens. No. All right. I guess it's the like last the silverfish that are gonna be in there, Katie. Yeah. Poor Katie's gonna have like nightmares of this being silver on the wall and like and spiders and stuff all coming and running out of it. Silverfish riding on the back of spiders and baby. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> it's Halloween time. Yeah. Okay. See, there we go. Quick, good justification. Yeah. Right One there. time a year we can yep. spook people and not be in court. <laughs> not be in court. All right, so I got all the spacers on there. Amy, if you want to lift up yes. Katie. And then we'll see if, uh, see how we go here. Let me get the glazing in there. Oh, you know what I did? <laughs> what? Dirt. Oh, no. I had uh, a dirt moment. Wah, wah. That's okay. It's easier to do it. He was the putting the spacing in before the glazing. Oh, or the yeah. yeah. I've done that before too. That's okay. It'll give me a chance to get these staples because they're making me crazy. Well, this is making me crazy because that adhesive is. All right, let me uh, let me borrow that real quick. questions so far for either or Amanda just as long as we're at this point nope that's good nothing I haven't been able to answer I don't know what the what is it right over there there it is yeah or is that the 16 by 20 nope 20 that's it. 20. Okay. just looks small I don't know what the uh, genus phylum or the species or order of the silverfish is so. <laughs> the species is silverfish I think 
Well, then you never know. Maybe yeah. there's like a subset of them. That might not even be the real term. It's probably some Latin thing like silver fish, just like tachycus or something. <laughs> All right, so this is our polystyrene glazing to do. Static electricity is our friend. Uh, uh, clearly. All right, there we go. Now let me do this again. So this goes like this. Okay, that's the one. Remember, pinwheel, not dovetails. Yeah, dovetails for uh, putting your flooring in. Music song? No. No. Here, here. Scissors. Yeah, that's right. Scissors, you're gonna mash it. It's We Want the Funk. I don't know who does that. I don't know. We Want the Funk. Mm -hmm. Alright. That's good. Can, can you explain pinwheeling? Pinwheeling? Uh, do you have a pen? Here we go. Or a pencil. Here, use the back of that. So, pinwheeling. And let me see where I can do this so that you guys yes. can see. So, like that. Uh, let's see, that's one. This other one's like that. This one's like that. Actually, forget that. Let me just draw it out. <laughs> so there's one side. There's another 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 side. Yeah, there you go. And then this one will go fully. And that one will go like that. So it's basically so that you don't see any, it's like this. You just Does keep that doing that. Does that make sense? Where it looks like the little, little kind of wings yeah, of the Yeah, so pinwheel. you want to, the reason why you pinwheel is so, and there's a line right here. The reason why you pinwheel is so that the corner is sealed. If you did it just like this. Right, right, right. Then you might see gaps. It's difficult to do at times, but um, it's just kind of, making sure everything otherwise um, where you've got those things together you might have a spot and with the clear ones you would probably really notice that the black yep. ones inside a black frame not gonna notice. not gonna be as obvious but you never know if it's a bright light or something like that god forbid yep. bright light on your artwork all right you want to lay that down and see how it fits well we probably need to trim it but we we'll can see we can check it out and see see just like katie difficult Katie, Katie, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I have a couple of Facebook users that are wondering how you keep the styrene from attracting dust particles. Oh, when it's uh, when I peeled off the plastic. Uh -huh. Yeah, when you peel off uh, the protective coating on acrylic. I used to make the joke at the store, we had styrofoam balls on the other side of the store. It was a pretty big store, yeah. and I'd peel it off, and these things start rolling through the store <laughs> towards me. Um, the only way I know of to prevent that is to wet the glazing before you peel them off, and then that'll neutralize the static. But then you have to dry it off, and with polystyrene, you got to use a very soft mic microfiber cloth. Clean microfiber cloth. Very that clean, have very in soft. It. I mean, real glass, you don't have to worry about it that much, unless it's museum glass. Uh, but yeah, it just water will neutralize the static. So if you're using a past, if you're doing it over a pastel, what's to keep the pastel particles from? You wouldn't if it, if, the, if you were doing a regular pastel, you wouldn't want to necessarily use right, polystyrene. Right. That was why we talked about if it's fixed, you know, really well, and then it's got that spacing between the mat and all that, it should so it's not fixed, keep some room. Glass. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that the what's happening when you peel that plastic off is you got positive and negative electrons, and that's what's causing the magnetic thing. Mm -hmm. But they they fade after a while. I mean, once you once that glazing's in there and the static goes away after a while, but initially it's really bad. And uh, 
Uh, it can you'll pull the pla pull it into your body and then walk around and shock everybody until you yeah, yeah. lose your charge and then it's good. Uh, we've got a we've got a um, mat that we can use to cut it. Oh, okay. Would it, would it be helpful to do it with the foam core over it to uh, kind of size yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that'll be, ooh, can we put foam core on? I don't want to smear Katie. Um, this has been fixed like nobody's business. All right, great. And, and it wasn't very dusty pencil. <laughs> oh, there's like 17 layers to fix it. If I'm there? I, I did it to show somebody and put my hand on it and went, I trust Sonalia. I know, you scared me. Okay, and what Amy was talking about, very good mm. idea, this is the foam core that's the size of the frame, and we're going to cover Katie up. Now this is kind of bright, you guys might not see anything on the camera. You do see what's kind of going on. There's an edge right here, slight edge, slight edge, slight edge here. Here, do this, right there. it'll give it something to look at. Okay, yeah. There we go. Focus. <laughs> All right, so we have a template now, and what I'm going to do is just to weight this down a little bit. And got my X-Acto knife. I'm used to doing this with a straight edge. So Y'all bear with me. Would it be easier me. to tick it and use a straight edge just to mark it with a pencil? Nah, it doesn't matter. If I cut into the foam board a little bit, it'll be all right. And it's pretty deep, so I can. Maybe while you're doing that, I'm going to get a, a hockey brush to do stuff in the dark off this since that's been sitting there. And the thing I'm cutting on this gray mat is a healing mat. And uh, they call it a healing mat because it is, uh, it'll cure a common cold. No, I'm just, <laughs> it, uh, Gimme, <Yimmy>, gimme. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, the scratch, it doesn't really scratch it. So it's not going to get too messed up when you cut into it. I mean, I can cut it like that and it just seals right back up. So. They're pretty cool. I use them in all my frame shops so that they can cut in the, on the counter and they're not cutting into the carpeted counter and into the wood after that. Yep, cotton paper. It's a little hurt up here. Oh, it's cotton? Perfect. It's acid yep. free. Only the best for Katie because she's worth it. Oh. We've, already, we've already established this. That was our warm and fuzzy issues. moment. The warm and fuzzy moment with Katie. Oops, I'm trying to get into the phone core. Yeah, her drawing has been sitting up on the shelf, so I'm going to dust it off just to get the dust off right. of it so we don't have it go to the uh, to this polystyrene. Let's get all your little doodads here. Oh, <laughs> we don't want them in Katie's artwork. I don't want them all oh, over there. me. <laughs> I, I, you'll live. Katie's artwork is more important. Oh, there we go. There we go. Does that help? Yeah, watch your fingers. <laughs> See, I ain't you stopping. You are being too wild if that's <laughs> in the way. All right, there we go. Okay. All right. I don't know if I got it right side up. All right, let's, uh, let's shut this real quick. Katie's behaving so well during this, too. Kind of makes me nervous. I know it's fixed, but ah! Ta-da! All right, so we know that our art is now Friends don't let friends not fix LC products. There's a joke in there somewhere, but... Uh, all right, so we got that done, and we got our frame with our spacers, so I'm actually kind of doing this kind of backwards. You want to lift that up for me, uh, yes. Amy? And then we'll take Katie off and put her face down on there. Hold on. And I always like you doing artwork that has spacers that the artwork is the size of the frame. That way I don't have to attach anything to it, no adhesives or anything like that. It's just going to set down on that ledge. It's usually easier just to do the 
part. For Here, you, why don't you do it? Okay. Here's the framer. If you'll take the backing. There we go. Mm -hmm. Put Katie in here face down. And she's sitting perfectly on the spacers. Man, I did good on that. All right, and this guy will go in there. Perfect, perfect. And I got enough to use the point driver yeah. and put my little sea urchins well, there in we there. Go. Go ahead and do it enough where she's, we don't have to add additional. Yep. Okay. Since you I didn't know, be a little more careful. I didn't know if you wanted me to put some UV glass in it later or something. I don't know, Katie. You want real glass set up yeah. later? Okay, well. Now that you've pulled it out. <laughs> well, now I'm going to go through. I'll just do, I'm going to do it the right way so they know. These things are pretty tight in there, folks, so you don't need a whole lot of them. She's done. All right. Will and Katie are done. All right. Now we get the fun one. This is the one where uh, I hope I get it right. Because <laughs> there's a lot to go on this. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, this is the pastel we're going to frame right back here. Um, if you want to get a close up on that. But before we do it, i got to prep some things. Okay, and we're not going to cut it on this because this is, this is my artboard. So. Little like gator board. Yes, I don't want it cut. I can get you another piece. Why waste a piece of perfectly good foam? Okay, well, why don't you leave the tape on there so that we can trim it just from the inside of the mat or from the outside of the mat, and then that way you can it'll be it'll keep us from moving. How are you gonna take it off to trim it? Oh, you don't want. I don't want the gator board. Okay. They're not. They're not. I mean, we get them for a good deal, but they're still not free. All right. All right. <coughs> okay, so this is the piece we're going to do. Let's turn this so that they can see it the right way. It's, yeah. it's turned, up, turned towards you. Overhead is facing you. All right, everybody's got that, okay, right. okay, get that centered, everybody can see it, okay. Not too bad for the second landscape of my life. Not too bad, okay, the we're, fourth gonna, pastel we're gonna move that out of the way. All right. <laughs> now that I got it. It yeah. does look nice. Um, if you want to slide that out of the way, so what I'm going to do on this one is because that's not fixed and it does is, I put one very light coat of fixed it okay all right we're gonna pretend it's not fixed and uh, the, the dust can fall, uh, fall and what I'm gonna do with this mat is build a riser and the riser is gonna be done out of foam core it's white natural I'll just lay it on there I don't want it to get dirty you can lay that back there set it up um, I want to take you to do that one. Uh, maybe 12 hours. Wow. Okay. All right. This is your everyday foam core. This is acid-free. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you have it between acid-free backing and acid-free mat, which we do in this case. Um, and what I'm going to do is use our two-sided tape, which is this stuff that's double-sided, so it's very sticky. job on that too. So what I'm going to do is just pin, I, I can show you pinwheeling a lot better now. Yeah. We'll just do this. Now with this, is this is there going to be a slight lip so that, that it'll catch dust? Yeah, I'll show you Down when I get to it. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this guy will go like that. We want it right at the edge, which it is. And then we'll do this one like this, and then I'll have to cut it to finish it up. 
I think I've made these long enough to work on both sides or to work all the way around. Okay. If anybody has any questions while we're he's doing this part, feel free to jump in, ladies. Not questions so much as interesting observations. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. that. I was going to say. <laughs> Interesting observation. Sam knows he's bald. <laughs> no. Number For one. For example, Ian was asking if anybody had ever tried encapsulating a pastel piece in resin. Like wax? In casting resin. Casting? Wow. Yeah. Uh, who was this? I, I, my this my fear would be that, oh, okay. that because pastel is a dust and once something would touch well, and move as it's poured. Yeah. Not only that, but I also mentioned that it would need to be, with most paper mediums, um, at least according to Hannah, they need to be sealed with a gel medium or something so that they don't go clear, for example. Oh, uh, yeah, so yeah. The yeah. integrity of the paper isn't compromised. Right. It would be an interesting experience, or experiment, rather. Well, and then, the, then the, another thing is, even though there are clear resins, they will age with time. Mm -hmm. That's and that's and then it's on there and it's not coming off. Yeah. That would be other other mediums. I don't think it's going to be as obvious. Like if you put it over oil or something, with pastels, the freshness of pastels is what makes them so unique. Not just kind of the more I guess scribbly nature, so to speak. Um, so that would be what I would think that it, that's gonna I like where he's going with it because you could make it so that you could do it without framing yeah. but I just I just don't I just don't know I like the fact that you used the word encapsulating <laughs> I think that was my word oh was it oh well I think I, I think <laughs> I I, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, say yeah. it very well too I say smart sometimes <laughs> Okay, all right. And this guy's is pinwheeling, so now you can see what I was talking about. So yes, I, I don't know if they can see the seam is there, because it's, it's just, it's there. Yeah, now you can see a little bit better. Yeah, there, there, okay. that, that way, this one will be that way, that one. That way they're all kind of tightly together. All right, I'm gonna get this one ready, and then I'm gonna build what's called a dust catcher. mount this that this will go over the artwork and it's been a long time since I've done this you need to find a break yeah. my old tired eyes mm -hmm. if I held it but maybe if we hit through it to Katie she could hold it back there and you can see where it was probably yeah, yeah, yeah. all right we're ready for the artwork again all right now Actually, we're not ready the, for the let's yeah. trim first yeah. yes Let's so move that stuff so we don't get dust. Probably dust. is a good um, idea. And I've got a straight edge. That will help. And so you say this line is 1620? Yes. Okay. Uh, copy, put an ampersand panel and traced. All right. 1620. Yeah, and dust the buffer that's built in right there. Right, right, right. Also about this is this is uh, the pastel card, which is made by Sennelier, and it has a it's actually a vegetable based texture stuff. It's not as thick as some of the other ones in Sandy, but it's also I mean it's probably like about what a four hundred in UR or something would be. Um, if you've got humidity issues like North Carolina, for example. <laughs> Um, or I, I, I had the windows of the studio open because it was such a nice evening and realized about three hours into this as I was working on the, uh, Did you get the... no, it's, it, because this is vegetable matter, it had swollen up some, so it oh, wasn't wow. as gritty and it was cut tearing off with the pastel pencils. And... So I had to alter the way I was kind of pushing it on instead of, you know, 
basically scraping it on is what mm -hmm. you're doing to leave the pigment. I was kind of pushing it into the surface texture and then after a couple more hours it got so squashy that I just had to stop and then bring it in here, start back over this morning after it was in with the dehumidifier. Oh, hour. wow. So, yeah, so word of caution, maybe not the surface if you don't have climate control going all the time. I forgot this was a horizontal hey, one. I have a question. Uh, Lorraine would like to know if you need a special mm -hmm. frame if you're using a pastel board. Mm -mm. It's just, it's just, a, it's already on a hard surface. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you would not have backing. to do, okay. yeah. yeah, unless it's, unless it's pastel board where it's thinner, not like a, like if it's like the ampersand pastel board where it's thick, that's backing built into it. But you would definitely, uh, if it was just more like the um, art spectrum boards or something like that, where like this is pretty stiff, you know, but you would want backing mm -hmm. behind it. Oh yeah, something like and that. And consider that with those, unless and, and something to think about with boards and surfaces like that, if 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 I'd done this if it was a 16 by 20 pastel board, it would be done to the edges, then you don't have anywhere for there to be that dust cover, you know, that dust area to fall down. You don't have any clean surface to go against a mat. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to measure in if you want to use that 16 by 20 but be able to mat it, you would want to measure in just shy of where that mat's going to be to yep. leave room yep. for that to go. And that's what I'm doing here. Yep. I'm leaving a little bit of space so that the dust can go behind there. So if you guys look, you can see, you can see a little bit of it. Yeah, the, there's a, there's a little ledge. Just a, what, a little over a quarter inch, probably. And I just remembered something else. Oh, I got what the tape right here. No, I, I got it right here. Um, what I like to do is sometimes seal the, uh, I forgot how strong this stuff is too. And we'll do that, and that'll just uh, kind of keep the foam mm. board from moving around. I only did one little uh, strip of the double-sided tape, something this wide. You probably would do two, uh, just to make sure. But we're trying to do this kind of in a not quick, but uh, time efficient, economical fashion. Time, timeonomical fashion. Please make a front work here. <laughs> okay. This is big the artwork, man. Alright. <laughs> it's not having any cap stressing me out. Call on that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I got the riser built, is what we call it. And you'll see that when it when I lay the mat down on top of the art, there is that little bit of space. And that serves two purposes. A, it'll keep the glass off of the art because that pastel will get all over the glass. And also it allows for any dust to find uh, fall behind the mat. Now I'm gonna build what's called a trap, I guess. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it, and this piece doesn't seem to be flaking a lot. But if you take tape and get it as long as the piece, and then come in here, and you want to kind of, I got to do it. Can you cut me another little, couple little strips off? Yes. How, how long? Oh, uh, they only have to be enough to anchor this down. See how it's peeling up on me? Okay. Okay. Just gotta get this thing to... I remember what I used to do. Here, let's, I don't need that. I figured out what I, I did last time. Need scissors. It has been a long time since I've done a dust trough or trap. I forgot how to do it, but that's all right. Are you using acid-free tape? Hmm? Is it acid-free Yeah, it's framer's tape. Two. Framer's two Not one, tape. but two. Do. It's the sequel. So, yes. I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but a couple people have asked, um, what if you did your artwork all the way to the edge 
and that, you can't mat it. That's what I just said. You'll use spacers. Was that if you were yeah, going to do a board or something? It, yep. It's all well with pastel, especially. Always consider that it's easier to leave extra room for the outer edge of where that frame is going to go. Like this is a 16 by 20. The image doesn't go to a 16 by 20. I did it as a 12 by 16. And then because I knew he was going to have a slight rise to that, I went over the edge. So if you look back in just that little bit that that is going to afford being raised up, you won't see like just the Point. bare paper, right? Right. But so what you need to do is say you've got a 16 by 20 pastel board or whatever you're doing your artwork on. You either need to do a 12 by 16 artwork to consider kind of already ahead of time how you're going to mat that or go the next size up and do it as a 16 by 20 on that to leave room. And that's and people do that with watercolor all the time. They do that with lots of mediums. They don't consider what the frame is that it's going to be in it's way easier to do it mm -hmm. with excess so you don't have to hinge things and right, because yep. this this type of an artwork you don't want flopping around being hinged that mm -hmm. affords it movement and you don't the less movement the better with the pastel right, yep. so plan ahead always with your frame and the thing is is that a lot of things like we're putting a lot into a frame right now we're probably gonna have to use offset clips to hold it in which are little stair steps because it's going to be sticking out the back. But if you look and make sure your frame is deep enough, think about what all you're going to put in it. You're going to have glass, spacers, maybe, mats, uh, backing boards, and your artwork. you got to think of the thickness of all that together and then figure out your frame depth to make sure that it'll all fit in there. Uh, it's okay if you have a wide frame and it sticks out just a little bit because you won't be able to get your head against the wall to see it sticking out. But if it's a real narrow frame and something sticking out an inch, you're going to see it sticking yes. out on the wall and it's going to look funky. But uh, um, anyway. And I tell this to artists all the time and they hate it and I feel like I'm being like this energy stifler, mm -hmm. creative energy stifler. Do work in specific sizes. Yes. Pick specific sizes to do most work in that make it easy to frame where you can just, you know, work in specific standard increments mm -hmm. where you've already got that all ahead of time anyway. Yep. I know it's not fun. Well, it'll save but you. It's, well, you can buy frames in bulk and mm -hmm. packs of four instead of yep. single ones. You can uh, buy all your matting and stuff at a bigger discount mm -hmm. because you can get it in packages. And already going in, you know what size you're going to be yep. working. It just, mm -hmm. it's, it, it actually, after a while, when the, the, you know, kill joy has worn off where you feel like <laughs> You you know under the, the art man's gone. thumb yeah it's it makes sense and it actually gives you more freedom because you can get stuff done in quicker amounts of times when you're trying to meet deadlines mm -hmm. if you've already got this planned out and if you're starting if you're a beginning artist especially and you want to and you want to frame your art when you when you're done with it do it in standard sizes you're going to save a lot of money buying frames that are pre-made to standard sizes. Uh, I've had artists come into the store all the time and they brand new artists really proud of their work They did something on the fraction and then they <laughs> go to the frame counter and wonder why it's going to be $180 for them to frame it mm -hmm. you know, Because we have to mat it out to a standard size and then they could buy a ready-made then But a lot of times when you try to mat out art that's not a standard size to a standard size You're going to end up with those wide versus narrow margins like we had on Will's piece So uh, just keep that in mind um, all right, what I got here is that I, and I remember what to do, is I take the framer's tape, lightly tape it down onto a surface that you can peel it back up on, and then take a double stick tape and run a strip on the on the on one of the edges of the uh, framer's tape. Then you have a way of sticking it into the uh, inside the mat. Now you want to make sure it doesn't extend past the opening of the mat or you'll see it on the face. But I, this is all sticky in here. Now with this, since that's going to go against the artwork, would it be good to then put another piece of tape just over that part, so it's not get as you're laying it down, it's not getting stuck or picking up. Oh, well, that's more dust that's or, real easy because we okay. already got this thing uh, measured out with the same size. So I just look and line it up as I drop it down and uh, get it on here so I see better. Just do it from the bottom. Yeah, so. There's a little bit of adhesive down at the bottom that's going to hold it in place. I kind of came over too far on the side, but there we go. And now, you know, what I'll do is I'll bring it up. This is 
only stuck at one spot. Bring it up like that. There we go. All right, so oh, that's upside down. But yeah. you guys can see the little space. I got to be careful laying it back down because I want to keep it together like that. But down at the bottom here, you can't see it, but there's the trough that I built. Mm -hmm. So any dust that falls down will go behind the mat and yeah, that little the, the, the table uh, is adhesive, so it'll cause the dust to stick. Now, if a bunch of dust is falling, of course, where dust is already there, it's not going to stick. But this is just kind of a make sure that it, when it's moved around, it's not going to get too too much of the dust falling around. It's not going to get on the face of the mat, and it'll be fine once you get it on the wall. So now we're ready to put it in the frame. Mm -hmm. I think I got a piece of 16 by 20 acrylic in there. And this is better than polystyrene. This is actually acrylic. Polystyrene is a polymer that's, that's not as nice. Um, but uh, that's that guy. And it's got, they all have the uh, peel off. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> and it's very clear. And it's not quite as static y as the, uh, as the um, polystyrene. So that's not really a problem with this stuff. All right, we've got the acrylic down on it. And we're going to put this in a gold plain air frame. And this still has the hardware on it. These frames come with the hardware attached to them. Just say giblets. Giblets? Giblets. It's Maybe near yes. Thanksgiving. Giblets. Oh, Amanda's not even listening. Answering the giblets. Doing my act. Oh. 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 Wow. oh. Okay. Amanda's See? busy right now. Yep. <laughs> I was trying to figure out the right way to phrase those things. Oh, okay. Uh, it would be encapsulate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get this thing, and I just slide it off and then futz it around once I get it flipped over. And it looks like everything's going to drop down in there. Yep, yep, yep. A little tight with my cut and the foam board, but that's okay. It'll fit in there. Now, this is still the paper. Um, yes. Are you okay with me pointing through it? The paper? Yeah, you won't see it. It's going into the rabbit. You're no put put foam core on it. I don't want it because this needs to. This is very okay, thin. We'll I do, don't want it to we'll be. We'll do the uh, we'll do the uh, spacer. Here we go. All right. Uh, and the offset clips. Right here. And the reason why we're using offset clips is see it's raised up. Let me, uh, the edge is slightly raised up. Where is it? Right. There you go. See how it's raised up slightly? Now, this is a wide frame, so it's not going to be an issue. Do you want quarter inch or do you want something even uh, narrower? The lattice, I have you eight. got eight to work. Yeah, I think this is quarter. This Hold is quarter, on. yeah. These are offset clips. I'll show you when she breaks out the eight from them. But they come in bags like that, and they're uh, little yeah. stair step thingamajigs. I'll make these work. I'm going to have to do a little trick with these. Uh, it's not going to be the prettiest thing, but I've had to do this before, depending on how it works. That's, that is going to be way loose. Uh, you know what we got? We got. Uh, <laughs> So we'll get a 22 by 28 piece here. And did I did the was the ampersand measurement a little wide? Do we need to trim that? No, nah, that'll be fine. More to get it to be smushed down when I when I do this. So if you'll pick that up and move it out of the way, I'm gonna do this and uh, make another backing board. If we had eighth inch offsets, I wouldn't need to be doing this. Um, where's that? Absolutely, yeah. This is just a unique circumstance. Um, if I had thought more carefully about the whole thing, I would have, uh, I would have used um, mat board as the backing, acid-free mat board, which is a lot thinner. It's only four plies. So, speaking of mat board, one of our viewers again, Ian, asked, 
about Pascal works done on directly on that board. How would you frame those? Would you need to put in a backing like an acid free backing or maybe just Matt, another piece of mat board? Mat board is still not well, it would have to have some sort of backing because mat board is not still not unless it's a super deluxe super what's what is it? The ply of where you can get those really thick mat boards. Oh that's six or eight ply mat board. You would still probably want to put a backing on that if somebody was just for uh, keeping it clean and all that. If well, yeah. Eight well, if it's eight ply mat board and you got paper art, you're going to have stability on the side that's touching the mat. But it's well, he, he's saying no, if you did it actually on like an acid free oh, acid cotton free mat, mat yeah, board, you, can do that. you know, like an archival mat board. Uh, if you're going to do your art on mat board, make sure it's 100% rag mat. That is that means it's cotton. Um, and I will tell you that it'll be a lot less expensive for you just to use watercolor paper or something like mm -hmm. that that's acid free than actually using a mat board. Rag mat board gets very expensive. Okay. Okay. Sixteen that way. <laughs> nice. enough for government work. That's 20. I'm going to do my 16s like this. No, I need to do them like that. I'm used to a wall cutter, so this is really confusing me. There we go. Math. Well, and that and the fact that all the numbers face. <laughs> Yeah, if they were facing me, I could see it a little better. There's numbers. 16. Yeah, there are, but oh. uh, it's 16 is there, is 18 here, I think, or 19. It's because it's going the other way. No, it's 19, yeah. Well, I know what it's doing. It's just, I'm about to cut that thing square. Oh, I got this one. Duh. 22, so this should be 20. Whoops, sorry. width and so I need to get this at 16. And normally I don't use this big bulky crayon thing. I use a pencil. Yeah, we've, we've got those. You want a pencil instead since that's really dusty? that way and I need to go 16 that way so that's where I need to go and I hate rollers that don't start at the edge this one's got that little eighth of an inch overlap it just really it's silly okay so that's 20 I am losing my mind that's 20 I need to go 16 from that you know what Amy would do in this situation? Take the other piece of foam board and trace it. It saves having to look for the straight edge. <laughs> you want to do this? Because yeah. I can't figure out what I know, I'm here, doing. click. I think here. I. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ta da. Jeez, duh. It's, it's the visual. Yeah. The artist in me. Good, because I'm, I'm used to using a wall cutter where it says 16, cut, flip it, 20, cut. And this thing's got this reversed. Uh, funky thing there. I'm going to just do it like that. Should have done this in the beginning. You want a pencil? I want a uh, exacto knife. Put the way back in. Thank you. By the way. That was a lot easier. Yeah, well, I sit behind a desk a lot now instead of being out in the field doing this all sort of thing. The spreadsheet's good enough for you? Yep. You know, I was doing that all day today. Fun. All right, there we go. Okay. Thank you, Amy. You're more savvy when it came to that. All right. Now we got the art. Now we can use our quarter inch offsets. We're just doubling up the board here. 
All right. Do, do, do. Yeah, that should be fine. Drill's not included. Here you go. Yeah. Like that, because I'm going to leave it in. Okay. If it's done right, I'll just leave it in. With the dust cover on the back. This drill has a good bit. It does. As long as we're getting to the end, so if people have anything else, go ahead and jump on and ask. I think that offset right there was not quite a quarter of an inch. I think that might have been a funky odd size. All right. And you could paper over the back of this just so you don't see all the... Oh, you'd want to seal it anyway, just so stuff Is doesn't get down so you in those. steal it? Yeah, we know how you are. Because yeah. <laughs> it wanders around the building and nobody can find it when they yes, need it. Yes, it does. We actually use that a lot. Let's check here. Yeah. Two more. More and we are done. Oh, that one went in nice. Do you always want to have two offset clips on the long side of the frame? Depends on how long the frame is. Uh, I would say something that sick this is 16 by 20 in the opening so you could probably get away with one in the center of all four sides but I do two anyway um, and the bigger you get you might have to add three uh, 24 by 36 I'm probably doing three on the long side and two on the short side and there we have it can you cut to the split screen kitty Oh, as, as she just went to the split screen so you could. Oh, oh, okay, there you, go. there you go. So it's all done, and Katie, if you go back to the overhead one again, they can see. Let me try and that get little it. lip. I'm trying to get it the right way. I'm trying to look and do it at yeah. the same time. Well, there's a little You're space in there. Turn it, yeah, at no, a that's little the higher wrong edge. Way. It's the wrong way. Gotta go like that. Yes. Yeah. The thing. There you go. Yeah, can you guys see the trough right? A little space. There's a space right there. right there. You can see how the mat's kind of floating above it. It's dark. It's dark. It's hard to see. But there is a trough down in here. And any dust that falls down that way is going to get stuck to that tape. But the piece is finished. Looks good, too. Great job on that piece. Thanks. And that's it. That's, uh, that's building a riser yes. and uh, framing. And yes, Frida. Um, one last question. I'm assuming that the answer to this is no, but would there be any issues with framing multiple images with one mat? Uh, well, so as long as you've got a custom cut mat with the yes, multiple, multiple openings. openings. Yeah. So okay. what you would do, like if you had a bunch of pastels, what you would do is go ahead and measure your pastel, come in, uh, make sure the opening overlaps a little bit to where you want it to to encapsulate the image. Mm -hmm. And then um, you measure that out, lay it all out. I would draw it out on paper. And then you can have a mat cut with all the openings. And once you have them all cut, then you can lay your artwork down on the backing, lay the mat down, center everything up, remove the mat, uh, use the framer's tape to anchor each piece down to the uh, foam board, and then drop your mat on. Now, building a trough for every one of them on multiples might be a little tricky because if you stick one down and it's not right, you might tear bringing it back up but um, yeah it can be done yeah those are custom cut mats too if you do them by hand you're a hero I used to do that yeah. 20 years ago and I would get through doing three or four openings and the very last one had my cut reverse because I didn't spin it the right direction and it's cutting on a bevel and it'll be a reverse bevel and I'd have to start all over 
Um, but nowadays they got uh, CNC mat cutters. You just program, uh, click a window opening, tile it to however many you need, set your outside dimensions, put the board on the deck, hit enter, and boom, it cuts it all. So it's a lifesaver when it came to uh, framing. Any other questions? We do have, I've got a couple people asking about the, if they've already done their artwork and they have done edge to edge, is it possible to, I know it's better to leave it, but if they didn't realize that and they've already gone edge to edge, mm -hmm. you're either going to lose some of your artwork because it has to have a lift to hold it in, or is it possible to like dry mount it on there? You wouldn't want to dry mount any original artwork, but what I would recommend doing is finding a good colored mat board that you can float it on top of. And then the mat board, you can either mat, and I've done this too, have artwork that stops here, it's on a colored mat that's bigger, and then I'll mat around that. And so you'll have a riser mat, not like this, but you'll have a mat to at least keep the glass off, otherwise you would have to use glass spacers. You just have to get creative with your... Exactly, mat. yeah, yeah, and I've done that a bunch. A lot of people, especially with watercolors, uh, has a deckled edge around the paper. A lot of people like to see that, and they, and they paint all the way to the edges. And so what we'll do is we use what's called uh, methacellulose. It's a wheat paste. You mix it as a powder. You mix it with water. Microwave it for a little bit till it starts to foam up. Take it out. Let it cool down, and it becomes a clear gelatinous goop. And then you use a Q-tip and just apply a little bit on all four corners. Drop it down onto your colored mat. Put weights on it. Let it sit for about 15 minutes. That is 100% archival, and it is a super strong adhesive. Yeah, the biggest problem is putting weights on a pastel. Well, if you do it on a pastel, yeah, that's going to be tricky. Um, but I, I mean, most even, even well fixed, putting that down. Well, if you, you well there's could pastels are going to have a mat with them, or they're going to be flush to the frame. But if it's not flush to the frame and you want to put it on foam board or a colored mat board, then you just use spacers. You know, okay. but but you might run the risk of that pastel dripping down onto your mat board that it's on. Yeah. So you got to think about that. But there's all kinds of tricks you so can. So moving forward, leave space. Yep. Yes. Yep. And do your stuff in standard sizes if you yep. want to frame it inexpensively. Uh, if you don't, then come visit one of Jerry's frame shops. He'll help you out. <laughs> yeah. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Are we good, ladies? All right. All right. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much. This has problem. been very yeah. educational. Yeah. Hopefully, people will take well, something from this and yeah. uh, go forward with that. <laughs> I'm a little futzy here. Like I said, I sit behind a desk now, but I did this for 20 some years in a shop and uh, I miss it occasionally. And, uh, <laughs> and I was good at it because I got all 10 of these. <laughs> That's true. true. Last true. question, yes. plexiglass or glass? What do you prefer? Uh, well, if I did, if it, well, it depends on the UV, if you want UV protection. Now there is UV acrylic. Acrylic, I didn't necessarily need to use acrylic on this 16 by 20 because it's smaller. Most people use acrylic for really big pieces because it's more lightweight than glass. So you don't have to put an extensive hanging system and all that. There is UV protected <laughs> acrylic. There's glass comes in several UV protections. So you have premium clear, which is none, conservation clear, which is 99%, but it's still glare. You have museum glass that's 99% UV protection and it's really clear. And then you have regular acrylic, you have conservation cr uh, clear acrylic, and then what you have, uh, you have Optimum Museum Acrylic. Now Optimum Museum Acrylic, just to give you an idea, really lightweight, ultimate clarity, doesn't even look like there's glass there, will protect your art from UV, but a piece that would be the size that would fit in here would probably be a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, it is expensive stuff. That's what, uh, there was a big movement in the museums about 10 years ago where all the master's works were taken out of the frames they were in they built a uh, linen liner to come inside just a little bit, and then they used the linen liner as a spacer, and they put UV acrylic in there, and then the liner, and then the artwork mm. back into it. And um, that was that was done for uh, most oils now in, in big museums, and uh, that was just to mainly protect it from the face, but it also had UV protection, and so it gets expensive, but something like this is fine. But just remember, acrylic is usually used for big pieces because it's lightweight, and um, and smaller pieces you could use like this, I would have just done uh, conservation clear glass and it would be UV protection. It would reflect light. Now, a lot of people use museum glass if they're hanging artwork where you walk into a room and you see a painting over the couch with glass and there's two end tables and you look into the painting, you just see those lampshades reflecting off yeah. of the glass. Museum glass, you don't have that glare. So.
Yep. Any other ones? All right. All right. Well, awesome. Next week. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no, next week is gonna be awesome. We have Jimmy Leslie from All Coal Art, who uh, Coal Art is the kind of company that handles Liquitex and okay. Windsor Newton. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also the director of the Fine Art Collective. He's Coal Art's resident artist. He was on with us last year. It was what episode forty, right? I have no I idea. I think it was episode forty <laughs> when we did the CAD free colors from Liquitex. Seventy nine episodes. And um, he is coming to demystify. Drying oils, oil mediums like alkids, and then the whole process of fat over lean. He's already sent me his outline. Uh, it, it could not, unless he climbs through the screen and just like slaps somebody in the face, it's not going to be any more clear <laughs> than what he's written. It's fantastic, just like, and you know him, he's got all sorts of props and good things to, you know, make it very obvious and reinforce all those ideas so you do not want to miss that episode you want to check it out uh, because Jimmy is is awesome and leaves everybody well educated every time awesome so, awesome so please make sure you tune in next week for that and um, I, I guess well, on that vein we'll see you next week thanks for tuning in I'll see you sometime soon I'm sure <laughs>